Welcome and thank you for joining us for this webinar presentation. We are the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center, or CSIAC, one of three IAC domains in the DoD Information Analysis Centers operating under the Defense Technical Information Center, DTIC, within the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Our informative webinar series highlights current and emerging research and technology developments. It presents an opportunity for accelerating the DoD's leverage of these advancements by increasing awareness and fostering technical collaboration. CSIAC serves as one of the premier information research partners and curators of technology advancements and trends for the cybersecurity and information systems community. As such, our organization supports those working in the cybersecurity and information systems domain of DoD research and engineering. We do so by helping navigate the vast landscape of scientific and technical information, allowing our customers to get a head start on their technical projects. With an understanding of the cybersecurity and information systems DoD research and engineering landscape, we provide research and analysis services. We help unlock access to information, knowledge, and best practices from government, industry, and academia to stimulate innovation, foster collaboration, and eliminate redundancy. We hope you enjoy this webinar presentation and that it serves as a catalyst for community collaboration and improved DoD cybersecurity and information systems research. Hey, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is John Clements. Uh, I am with the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center. I'm filling in for Phil Payne, who is off doing his civic duty on jury duty today. Um, but uh, I am happy to be here to help present our uh, today's webinar on improving security, privacy, and authentication with a quantum enhanced TCP IP protocol. Uh, before we get started, I would just want to make a couple of administrative comments. First of all, if you need a copy of today's slides uh, or would like to follow along, uh, you can go to csiac.org slash webinars, find today's webinar listing, and you can download the slides from there. Uh, I did, uh, just before the webinar started, I posted the link in the chat directly, and I'll, I'll post it again in case people don't have access to uh, the, the chat that took place before they joined. Um, but if you have questions for our presenter, uh, I would encourage you to go to the bottom right of your screen. There's a three dot ellipses menu and you can click on the Q and a function there. And I encourage you to drop your questions in there. Uh, I'll do the best I can to monitor the chat uh, to pick up any questions that might go in there, but ultimately uh, the best way is to get them into that Q and a. And lastly, uh, just apologize in advance. Uh, this, this is not my area of expertise. So uh, during the Q&A, if you can uh, make your question kind of as clear and spell out any acronyms that, that uh, might need to be spelled out as possible, um, I, would, uh, I would appreciate it on my end. I'll do the best I can to filter those questions. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's uh, uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Paul Wang. Uh, Dr. Wang is a professor and the chairperson of computer science at Morgan State University. He is a Link Fellow and has held positions such as the Director of the Center for Security Studies and Chief Information Officer of the National Biomedical Research Foundation. He was directly involved in the drafting of the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, or NICE, framework. In addition to authoring books and publications, speaking at conferences, and receiving numerous grants, he holds four patents, three of them licensed. Dr. Ryan received his PhD under Dr. Robert Ledley, the inventor of the CT, or com Computer Tomography Scanner. He completed postdoc studies in quantum computing at MIT. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Dr. Wang. Hi, good day. Thanks for the introduction. So every day we enjoy seeing our beautiful world with circles, the waves, the colors, musical notes, and uh, infinite loops. Very simple, but as a scientist, I know they are, so they have the deep connections with mathematics. For example, linear algebra, Fourier transforms, cryptography, and now we are talking about quantum computing and quantum enhanced security. So I use Matt Bishop's word in the book, you know, computer security book, 
computer security is about art and science. So oh, let me move my slide. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you're not, not sure what that means, I'll tell you the art has always a connection with the science, vice versa. If you go to my my garden, I can, you can see, you know, my garden is different than others. So you, you can you see other places. You know why? I plant uh, onions in a circle. I plant chives in a rectangle, and I plant the dill in triangle. So my wife said, hey, you waste the land, are you doing this? I said, well, I'm not a farmer. Yeah, so that's like, a, you enjoy all the basic shapes. So you're gonna hear from a very, very basic, don't be so simple, but sometimes it might be a little bit stretched, which is fine. So first, a question to you, you know, anybody, you know, you don't have to answer, but I think, what are those four people in common if you can, you know, you can, you can post, I want to, it's a, okay. So these four, interesting, right? Let me tell you this, all four, they love music. Everybody loves music, not, 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 not a valid statement, but they not only love, they play, you know, the first three uh, violin, right? Uh, we have iPhone today, if you read the biography of a, Steve Jobs, you know, the iPhone benefited for his love in music. You know, Steve Jobs wanted to listen to music, but not on the CD or the LP, right? So he was trying to find a way to store the songs in a device. You had about remember called iPod. That's the start of the iPhone later. But I'm not sure everybody know uh, Senator Hatch. Uh, you can Google something, but not all, right? He is a musician, of course, of course politician, right? Musician, I'm talking about uh, that, that as aspect. Uh, he has songs, you know, several CDs. He gave me several CDs. And he told me, uh, of course, in person, he, when he was young, he made a, he made a Guitar, a bit of guitar, yeah, guitar himself. I did Google, I didn't see this on the internet, but I think this is the truth. So the, you see the scientists of all politicians, everybody, they have something to do all with the music. Another simple question, what the color of this tree? Everybody know, right? Well, maybe not, gotta be cautious. I cannot, I thought I cannot ask you that simple question. What color of the tree? I would say it depends, see? So what color of the tree? That's what, when I was asking my daughter when we were at the Front Royal, you know, Shenandoah River, we have the, you know, vacation home over there. So at the dark, the tree is not green. So what is the tree? We understand, or the, everybody understands the tree. The green tree, right? Trees uh, come from come from if the condition is there, the light. Without the light, there's no color. So there, you cannot see a tree is green because this is not green, right? At the dark. So what that with cyber security? Yeah, you're gonna see. And I mentioned about the tree color, right? The light. Thank you. The light is magical, right? Give you, you know, you, everybody want, like, uh, take a photo. Everybody like to take photos, right? So we know the light is so important, different angle, different time, things like that. So what is the light? Light, by definition, is a composer of particles called photons. And then, the matter, right? It's composed of particles called electrons, uh, photons, neutrons, right? Also, the second property for light is a wave-like. It's not a street. It's like waves. 
So we don't see it, but it's too small. We don't see it. It's there. That's the by 1600, right? You see over there, they discovered already. It's the wave. So it's a wave. So light is not on the straight line, but it's a wave. Uh, keep going this way. Also, light is not nothing. Everybody thinks, you know, people will think about it, right? Light is nothing, but not nothing. Actually, they are small particles, very, very tiny. You know, um, I would understand this way. The small particle hits our eyes, the retainer, right? Then we see everything. It's so small that uh, we don't see each other in the same way. But I think you can see in my lab. I can show you. I have a lab to show you everything is real, of course. Then we go back to waves. I said, like the waves. What are the waves? Well, everybody understands the wave is there cycling, right? There are cycles, you know, we, we see signs, cosine, sine, cosine, or waves. You know, the instrument is the waves. When we go to concert, no, no, the first one, first, first, first thing we do is tune. You know, which instrument is for tune? Tune the orchestra, oboe, right? Why the oboe? Why not a violin? Well, because the oboe is very, very close to the waves, science wave. It's pure. You don't have interference. Okay. So that's something over here. But for this one, you when I look at the, you see the flute very close, right? But I, I think the uh, oboe is the best. Uh, piano, you see, even the same node, but the waves are different. The chop is over there. I, I did a small math. I like it. Everybody like math, right? Small math. So I look at the frequency. I know this is the C. Why is the C? Because just look at the 256. So you, I did, I did the math, you the four, A is the 40, 440, right? And then plus A, uh, B flat and B and C, you do, you multiply the two to the, the square root of 12, that's the octave, and you got a frequency. So you see the frequency is different. So the, the, the thing we, we see, the pure size wave, yeah, there's only one frequency. Actually, if you look at the spectrum, because spectrum here is maybe more than one. Ideally, it's one, but uh, that's why the sound different. Okay, I mentioned now the, the, the cycling period. So the period has a transform. I want to talk about this. So as I mentioned about it, it could be very simple, a shape, but uh, could it be a little bit more, more than that. So you're gonna see in a moment. You may know the clock, the period. Piano, right? Uh, 12. Uh, you may see, why the pi and the e? You ask me later, I can explain to you. Uh, there's another one is uh, we call exclusive or. If everybody know the, I believe, right? Cryptography, the so x or exclusive or function is the most important function in cryptography. Yeah, well, really? Yes. Okay. Um, so, what what is the? If you don't know, but what is the simple thing? Is that sounds like a clock, right? If you see nine o'clock, but a six hour is a three. Right? So you know three, right? A three plus another six is nine. So if you look at the beauty for X or R is you know, they are kind of like a circle, right? A circle, like a clock. So I'm gonna stop here, we're gonna continue. Also, I mentioned about the waves, like sine, cosine, if you remember high school, maybe even college, right? The equation on the right, upper right so corner over there. So the, the sine and cosine have something to do with the e to the power of something. EX function, okay? Why EX function? Well, cybersecurity, cryptography, we didn't talk about this. Everybody know RSA right here. RSA, there's something based on the E. How are we gonna attack or improve or 
protect. So there's something related with the period. Okay. Next one. So these are the many songs, right? I, I will see what is the period. Well, everything there's a period over here. So if you look at all the songs over here, at least two, right? I'm not playing play every, every single one. They have something in common. In common. So here, guess what do you think? Oh, sorry, I think. Uh, I'm not sure you can you can hear. Did I share the sound? No? No, I don't think we heard it on our end, Dr. Wang. Sorry. Okay, okay. All right. So I think that I have to, you know, this is a, uh, something I'm not. This, the second one is uh, God Save the King. I, I can tell you, you know, right? The first one is the Army song. The third one is uh, Johnny Cash, right? The, the Real Fire. So, you know. There are many others. I'm not gonna play every single one. I'm in Sunday night, right? New World, you know, the, everything. And then, then you need to, uh, all, all, all the songs were there. What is the in common? Nothing very in common, right? But uh, let me tell you my discovery. If you look at the harmony, they are very in common. Basically, it's like a C, F, G, seven, a nine, and a go back to C. There's a loop. There's a there's a circle. There's, they are circling everything over there. Even the uh, you know the anthem, right? American anthem. So still they follow the some of the basic basic uh, you know rules, which is uh, basically from C. And it could be others, right? but this one, those things you know, from C to F to G, to go back to C, or the big loop or small loop. Okay, I mentioned about the period. Now I'm talking about the transform. Uh, transform is a very, another beauty, I said the beauty of a transform. So look at the left one, a point or a line. It's a point, maybe not. If you transform, you see this is a line. The second is a 2D or 3D. You don't know, right? You don't know because you can transform. You rotate the axis. Oh, this is a 3D. The third one, either random or has patterns. We don't know. Wow, <clears throat> there are patterns over there, right? So I'll tell you the beauty of transform. Even something we don't see, right? Then we can try and find a way to transform. Sometimes maybe in our life, I'm thinking about the same. If you don't, if you run into something very, very bad and you cannot get out, you know, what, what do we do? Maybe you go to church, you, 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 do, you talk to a friend, they give you some psychiatrist, right? They give you some guidance. So again, so to see something you don't see from a different angle, transform. Now a little bit more. The Fourier transform. Huh? So I'm talking about the, the you know the DFT. I'm talking the FFT. So if you, I mean, many people know. If you don't know, that's fine. I think uh, uh, basically the idea is if you so everybody like pictures, right? Take photos over there. You can process if you want to enhance the light. You do a lot of things. They all. Like on the phone right now, we can do it, but it's on the mostly the use the FFT. I huh? do the image processing. I get it, get it, get it fast. All right. So the FFT is you need, you know, the a matrix of pixels. So horizontally and vertical the matrix, right? So it, there are many many rows and like many many columns. So if you think about every pixel. You do image processing is about n times m, or sometimes you could say n square, like a square, because they, they are the square of pixels, right, on, on the screen. The square takes more time. Something we can do, but not 
not easy to image process and give you a, a second if you get an answer. Maybe it take you 10, uh, 10 seconds. That's what the before, right? But the way we transfer everything to a frequency domain, we call the fast Fourier transform. Basically, we cannot solve it in a good way in time domain we transfer to frequency domain. Okay, you, over there, if you look at the big square on the right, basically tell you is, if you, I hope you know, right? The so-called multiplication become of many times of addition and subtraction fast, right? If you look at the science wave to the left, that's two, two dimensional, one dimensional, if I want to stretch the science signal, you see the left, right? Or, or compress, would be very, very hard. Think about how you can do it. Whatever circuit you can do it, use it, do it. But if you transfer to frequency domain, like a, like a AC, AC in US is a 50, right? In other country is a 60 hertz. So, Basically 50, 60, you just move minus 10, plus 10, you get it down, and then you transfer back. Becomes so simple. Again, something we cannot do. Think about it, transform. Then uh, I believe you know the short algorithm. I did have the opportunity or honor to study with him. Uh, basically, basically short is trying to attack RSA, something like RSA, not only RSA. Uh, so this, that algorithm is so smart, so beautiful, you know, where, when I was studying, this is a stretch, I, I had a very good math, but it's still a stretch to understand everything. So based, based on the short algorithm, if you read, it might take you some time, I can share something with you. Right. Basically, they are rely on two things I mentioned earlier: the period and the transform. Okay. So, so the period in RSA algorithm. So yeah, we don't know, right? Everybody, are we are we familiar with the, the period in RSA algorithm? Maybe not, but yes, there is a based on the number theory. Uh, you know that. That's mathematics, number theory. So again, the uh, idea is we want to factor a number becomes two, which was multiplied with n, right? P and Q, the prime number multiplied by n. We know n is a very, very hard to find P and Q, but uh, sure, it's try to find a way to do faster. So what, how slow if we were doing uh, like a classical way to factor uh, a, a big number like RSA, the 2048. You need a billion years. B, B, I said B, billion years. Okay. So, how fast if we were doing on the quantum computer? See, based on number theory, the Fx is periodical with a period R. Just we just cannot find out. It's hard. Find out if you find a period, we got it down. So, based on that, uh, based on that, you can do the encryption, decryption. Okay. I'm stop, I'm gonna come back later on this. I'll give you a break. Uh, so, if you again go back to the biography of Steve Jobs, there's a, there's a blue box concept. I mean, if you study. CISSP, I was a, I had a CISSP. Also, I was a, a taught CISSP before. Uh, the blue box. Sometimes they give, give you the, I think in the, in, the, in the test over there, right? If you know, basically the blue box is a, there's a circuit plug on the old time, right? The phone, you can make a long distance call for free. That's called a blue box. And a, a Steve called the, the pop room, right? Uh, went through, but, uh, but uh, you know, not, 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 not picking up, uh, anyway. 
and with another person based on the signal. Because you know, you, you remember the the tune, right? Old the old phone. You if you even today the key keypad. If you if you dial, if you you press, each key, each number have different sound. That's a different frequency. Sound is the frequency. <clears throat> so Steve Jobs studied this and put a circuit generator himself. So they have no need for for paying for that. I know another person uh, did a green box using the old dial phone, right? Dial phone, basically using the, the, the UFI high up, right? The button over there to simulate the, the dials, the signal. Remember, if you hold the phone with dial zero, is 10, right? Basically, the 10 signal. So the, those are the, the way uh, you can dial without any restriction. Because of that, that's, that person actually was me. I was never paid long distance call bill when I was at the uh, college and graduate school. Sorry, that, that's something about Steve Jobs it was not legal back then, but still he bragged, right? I think I can brag a little bit too. Uh, I didn't pay, uh, but the, the idea is not, a, I actually not about money, it's something about the, the technology. Okay, I mentioned about the show earlier, right? Uh, so you have to have the exponential. Remember I mentioned about the EX, right, function. And then this will be very, very hard. So what is, what happened now? There the article, I shared with you the link over there. You mentioned about the RSA 2048. You need the 372 qubit with a thousand of depth. Right. So you, 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 I hope you know understand, but don't don't worry. Uh, to to solve, what is the current standard? IBM earlier, right? Five, and we keep going to 127, 433. Now it's a little bit more than a thousand qubits. They say, oh yeah, that, that you, you're gonna you're gonna attack RSA, right? We should not. There are some other restrictions, right? But how secure are we now? Uh, a lot of concern. Uh, people could, uh, you know, store store now and then uh, decipher later. Uh, you, you know that is the adversary is countries over there. They are doing the same thing. So we need to do better. And the RSA, we the RSA right every day. RSA is there back door for on the RSA. I'm not argue. I'm, I just want to share something with you. Um, so the other way, actually, I'm teaching you my class over the years to show how you do the key splitting, divide the key in half, and one give it to, for example, uh, you hold it, one give it to the uh, police, right? Law enforcement over there. They could decipher everything without your private key because of the, that's a technology. I can give you a demo if you need, I can, I'm happy to share with you. Right. There are some other articles mentioned about the backdoor for RSA. What, why is backdoor? I don't know, maybe RSA, RSA want to be something they control. So sometimes it's maybe good or maybe not good, who knows? Technically, I would think backdoor is always, always bad practice. We use backdoor like a like a zero day, uh, but but what if other uh, adversaries they got it? You may heard the post quantum cryptography <coughs> PQC. So basically, based on the very simple <laughs> ideas, just like RSA. RSA is so simple. I tell you, two prime numbers multiply, you get a product. And they based on the product, you cannot go back. You can, but it takes forever. It takes a billion years, right? The mathematical way for PQC also very simple. They use a crystal uh, concept. So if you look at the small chart, I don't want to be talking about this here, but if you look at the chart, you start from zero, zero, 
zero one two one. You know the point over there, and you keep going, you keep going. There the path, the path is a secret. Only you know, and the other people they don't know. If they want to find out, there will be a lot of a lot of space you can explore. Some like RSA, right? Take you forever. All right, so that's the very basic ideas. Um, so people talking about it. We have the PQC, everything is safe. I know uh, NIST is a proposing the PQC, right? I, I, I agree. Very good, very nice. But as a scientist, I just want to have another, <laughs> another thought personally, right? About a worry free PQC, which is a, so that's your claim, right? This way. Okay, let me go back to the uh, history. Maybe every, we, are, we are like history, right? Enigma, World War II. Remember the the uh, Alan Turing, right? Turing. The, if the movie, if you see uh, the imitation game, I uh, strongly recommend everybody to see that game. That's that game, uh, that movie, uh, Enigma. German developed an Enigma using the Japan, right? Back then. The mathematician said you need 100 years to break. True or false? False. In 1940s, after that, and later, we have called a new method called a statistical analysis. So now we can, if we use this, we can do very easily. Everybody remember DES. Don't use the DES anymore, but that's the DES, right? DES in 1976. They used about 30 years, I believe. Uh, that's published by, by the NIST. Right? The DES was not strong enough. They put the triple DES. So they all, if you use preview or study the CISSP, you know, all the, all the stuff up there, right? Uh, when, we, when they finish the three, Triple deaths, they said that they, you can be good for 2030. Sure, of course. Of course. Right? So they're there. Uh, they're they 1998, that was a cracker. Were there. Later, we have a 2002, we have AES. AES is still strong. Nice. Then, talking about our, uh, RSA 1977 was the claim that you need three training years to break RSA, true or false? True, back then, not now, not anymore, right? Because of the, the true algorithm, if you have the good computer over there, can be, can be down in minutes or maybe less, right? We never know there's a shortcut because of the mathematics is so simple. Maybe you can guess two numbers, just multiply, you got you got an answer. You never know, right? So nobody mathematically prove no shortcut. You know, no easy way to get, get into. Again, I mentioned I'm vulnerable to quantum attacks. So now last year and then this year too, right? Talking about the PQC, post quantum cryptography, secure against any computers, true or false? It is true, but uh, but I'm a scientist. I put a question mark over there. Any, any time? I don't know. Well, what what like RSA? If you look at the history, Enigma, DES, Triple DES, RSA, and the uh, same idea I, sh I shared with you, the idea the small trick over there, but it's, it's very hard to reverse, right? Uh, you start guarantee that against any computers. Um, I have to see yes, but, uh, but I need a question, uh, question mark over here. Now we get another part, QKD. They, this is based on the quantum hardware, quantum mechanics, right? So there are European countries, many over there. I have a QKD in my lab. It's, a, it's amazing, right? They are pretty good. Uh, they use a quantum key 
by you know, generally quantum key distributed to the network. So the idea is, if you know the property of a quantum, you cannot observe. For example, if you're man in the middle attack, right? They want to see, you know, from the fiber from uh, any place, uh, the data is going to to check what's going on. But a quantum channel, you cannot. You observe is gone. The data is gone. It stopped. Then the entanglement, if it is the entanglement based, they will be stopped. No entanglement. So there will be error. We're gonna know what's going on. What's going on with the uh, somebody who might be trying to hack into or observe the data. Yeah. So it's a very very good device, uh, but uh, not me. There's nothing to worry. They are the publication or there. I'm not endorsing endorse this publication, but I'm telling you, you if you want to read. Okay. So what made the mystic we made history? What we thought strong crypto algorithm may not be that strong when looking from a new perspective, not like a transformer I mentioned, right? Yeah. So like Enigma mathematical, they do the, you know, the, you know, like like a try every number, right? But no, we do the statistical analysis. We are not follow your way, we are following the other way. I mentioned the transform. Maybe something new, maybe something you had you never know before. But that's all what happened in history. Now I'll give you a little bit more about the uh short algorithm. Uh I mentioned remember I mentioned about the frequency, you know, signal you want to stretch, you want to compress very hard. You what do you do? You move to frequency domain, become addition subtraction. An image processing, like, uh, you know, we're talking about the pixels, right? If you, uh, in square, a lot of com computation, uh, in square, if you move to frequency domain, I mentioned about a, a subtraction and uh, addition, but a little bit more, basically become n log n. n log n is much, much faster than n square, much faster. Same idea. Okay, same idea. So we cannot solve the uh, you know RSA problem. It's very very hard. Uh, you mentioned about billion years, right? But what? How about this? We move the problem to frequency domain. See whether we can, what happened. Actually, that was Shaw did. Peter Shaw, right? The professor at MIT. Uh, so the idea is, initially, it is uh, exponential, ex, right? It's unsolvable because too, you need too much time. But the the ex, the, the the exponential part, right? If you use the quantum co computer, computer the frequency frequency domain, right? I, I did it myself, right? This is my program I wrote over there. Basically, it become addition and subtraction again, but of course there's some overhead, right? So the idea is from sure is from ex, you know, unsolvable to uh, you know the polynomial, like a x three, x three is, is pretty good. I mentioned about if it's a quantum computer, we can do it depending on the how 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 fast, right? Could it be minutes? Could it be even faster. Okay, so the, the idea is if you look at the left initialization before we use quantum computer, recursion, QFT, or quantum Fourier transform, again, transform, tend to the exponential to what? To modular and like a, like a clock. I mentioned about cycling, right? You know, the rep repeating cycling. When you finish, you do the QFT reverse, right? Transform back. So for quantum you measure, you do the classical calculation to get factors. Again, I, I, I run the program, I, I use a small number, I get it down, so it's working. 
little bit faster. Let's see time. Okay. Uh, so what is the quantum computing? I'm not uh, uh, talking about the a lot about the on this area, but I want to give you quick ideas. Why quantum computing is fast? Could be fast, right? Well, first they have three properties: superposition, entanglement, interference. What does superposition mean? I'm, I'm not giving you definition. You can Google, right? So if you look at the you this current computer. You and me, we are using right now. I tell you, write a program, find the red ample. You can see, right? Red ample. So that's the program. For each ample on the tree, if the color is green, then continue. Else, you find the red, red ample. So you start from root, keep going, 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 one by one. Finally, you are getting the red ample, maybe the last, right? It looks like. So take, there will be, for example, a thousand ample even a thousand times, right? So I can see I tell you only ample tree. Could it be could it be a large the problem? How people see red ample? If I ask you where the red ample is there, what happened? What happened? Because when we look at the tree, we can take everything. So our computer is so smart, so good, but it may not be. Are only like a blind people person. Right? You only look one by one. Like if you start from root, would it be do right? Then over there. Okay. So you the superposition. Is, I'm not only use zero and one. Zero and one may not be the best best way to represent the data. Which is I you see this is the case. Entanglement. So if you look at a, the man over there, you need a switch. Many, many switch, right? To put an instruction, old computer, mainframe, like, like this way. But if you entangle, for example, I do a solve the problem, I need one million lines, right? You need one million times. So what is the entanglement that can help you? Not like, you know, you see over there, domino. If you set up correctly, you push one, all work is done. Instead of a million times, I only do one time. It's done. Uh, interference. I mean, that, that's, that's something we see every, every day. You have the water waves over there. Uh, you know, when they, the waves, you know, they are high and low, right? If the high and high together, you get higher. You know, the high and low together get a cancel. Low and low together get even lower. That's what happened over there. And even more become very complex out of ocean interference. But if you do it right away, you know, right away, so the problem would be involved. So the the everything, everything, if they get it to the point is they all end together, so you will see a sharp spark somewhere like in the water, that would be your answer. Think about the evolution. We are the same. Everything. In the beginning, we are random, right? Translation, mutation, you know, everything. Then we are become the, the fitness become increase, increase the family. We, we are the human, the others are not, not as good as we are. Okay, so I think that helps. I mentioned about earlier, why the binary? So you look at the picture, two pictures, right? Along it. So if we, we look at the left binary, only two colors. Black and white, right? Which is what you lost, lost, lost many, many, many millions, right? 16 million color, you only use, use two. So, yes, so the future quantum computer, something like a, something on the right, the current computer compared with the future computer is a picture to the left. You will see how much better is the quantum computer. I think I may not be able to, to listen, but let me try. So the bugle, right? The base, base two. What's base n? I mentioned the binary is base two. Base n, for example, decimal is base ten, right? So the best music, the best, uh, is the bugle. This is the one. Uh, I think it's not as good as the trumpet over there. Uh, I hope you can hear, but I, I, I forgot to check. Okay. 
the mathematics, this is the mathematical, the time analysis. 1D, I mentioned 1D domain, one dimensional domain, why you doing the stretch is hard, you change the first domain, become easy. 2D is same thing, right? You from x square to n log a, a, a square, right? But the, uh, the key is change the flex domain. The EX I mentioned earlier, right? N dimensional signal, if it's impossible to, to process, but the QFT would be able to, to change to addition and subtraction with some overhead. So that's something you look at the speed, you look at the uh, what we can do. Now we can look at the quantum internet. Uh, I did get a few uh, National Science Foundation grant. Uh, this is the most recent one. I'm doing this. As we know, TCPIP have seven layers. And if somebody's called differently, but it doesn't matter. And uh, we need a network, we need routers, switches. If we move to the quantum networking, internet, right, we need uh, more. We have the encryption uh, key, how to decrypt, uh, distribute the key, right? Uh, basically, if you look at the, the queue over there, the service, this MM, mathematically called MM1 model. Uh, below are the two books I authored. I think if you are very high professional, you can skip. But if you are not, if you want to learn a little bit more of everything, architecture, hardware, software, security, the second one with quantum computing, maybe you can read the second one in the middle over there. So this is the my lab, my plan. Um, this is the uh, second year I'm working on the project. Uh, we have the lab over there. We want to there put an encryptor, right? The encryptor is not a, just a regular encryptor. I want to encrypt the quantum key. The lower left is the QPD. I have two devices, that are very expensive. Uh, it's very, very expensive. They have two channels. If you see one, that they the fiber channel on top for communication. The lower channel, fiber channel, is really for quantum uh, data going over there. So you can see the encryptor on the right. I do have another device I mentioned earlier, the lower right, to give the demonstration of you can see the ma uh, the man in the middle attack and a single photon generation, single photon. I mentioned how, you know how small when I mentioned in the beginning, generation and entanglement. I mentioned the, the beauty of the entanglement I generated in my lab. So my research is a plan, uh, I'm, I'm doing right now actually, doing a lot already. I want to modify the TCP IP. Why modify? Because I want to make it more secure. At the bottom level, you know, remember the OSI, right? Uh, from one to seven. At the bottom level, I add one more layer, or the layer zero, I would call, called a quantum, quantum channel, we call photonic channel. This is a quantum channel. The key would be distributed directly from that level. Okay. And uh, I will modify, modify the layer, layer seven uh, with PQC. So you can see my approach really is a hardware and a software approach. I'm not using both. I'm not only using one, PQC, I'm using both. I, I replace RSA related with PQC, but I'm adding a quantum channel, make sure the secure. Guarantee the, I don't guarantee the, but guarantee the security. Okay, so you can see the, uh, the quantum channel, photonic ch channel on the lower right, you know, the, the lower part of the uh, device, that's uh, all in my lab. So what happened? If somebody wanted to see, wanted to check, even if it's a red line between the two, the Alice and Bob, right? If anybody wants to 
observe the Bob or Alice will would know. Would know. Why? Because the quantum make sure the quantum theory is make sure you cannot observe. Okay. This is the protocol I'm developing actually to update all of this. Uh, I'm running out of time to to describe this, but uh, I think you you get a sense in the combination of everything. Uh, I have blog, the link over there, that's my blog. You can click, you can take a look, further look. I have a three formats, mathematical, this is a diagram, there's a, there's a program, right? A pseudo program over there, you can take a look. Uh, I did give $100 to everybody uh, to see because of the people mentioned this is the best clear description about the, the quantum, uh, not quantum, network security diagram. Uh, again, I wrote my design myself, right? On the internet, people talk about this. I did give $100 to anybody to claim a final, final one better than this one. Uh, so far, nobody claimed. So if you wanted to see, I can, I can, I can give you the money. <clears throat> okay, so again, the research is to build a quantum test bed. When I mentioned about a lot about quantum stuff. Quantum computing is still a little bit further away, I would say future. How, what is the future? Future is not today, right? You know, not next year. Uh, but a quantum cryptography is now. That's my focus. Quantum networking cryptography, we can do now. Uh, that's the 10 years ago, Senator Diane Feinstein uh, working on the, the bill that I was uh, involved at one time. I had the honor to um, meet her at, the, at her office over there. So what had happened over there? I will tell you the cybersecurity is still a challenge today. Quantum and a post-quantum cryptography can enhance the security. A combination, this is what I'm doing, of a quantum hardware and a quantum safe software seem a good solution. Not everybody do it this way, but they have different opinion, but it's fine. But I think uh, you know, that's something in common. So I would like to thank ASF for supporting my ideas with multiple grants. I and my team are working to achieve the goals, not only for publication, you think university, right? Or publication, no. We're also working on, on the implementation and applications. We want something to see, right, to, to use. So I welcome everybody to visit my lab and contribute to the knowledge of discovery of quantum security. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, now I'll take questions. All right, great. Thank you so much for that presentation, Dr. Wang. And we do have a couple questions in the Q&A section. Again, there should be a, uh, an ellipses menu down probably at the bottom right of your screen and you'll see Q&A in there and that's the best way to get your question answered. So we'll get started with the ones that are in here already. Uh, first one comes from Jackson Bush. Uh, question is, what is the advantage of quantum memory and quantum keys when post-quantum cryptography like Crystal's Kyber can be calculated on standard computers? Okay, so the very good question on the technical, right? Quantum memory still in the research stage. Uh, I mean, I'm, I showed you the earlier the, the diagram over there. The network, you need the routers, you need the switches over there, right? The, 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 the store and forward concept, you need memory. So that's something very, very important, okay? So go back to the question is, if you have a PQC, if you have everything, right? Uh, looks pretty good, you can run on regular computer. Yes, that's one approach. That's the, uh, everything looks looks fine, right? I mentioned about RSA too, right? But the, the quantum memory could add to the physical security. So when we talk about the quantum memory is not a, not a right, right now that the memory in the router is over there right now. They will be able to, for example, right, to, uh, store the entanglement, you know, there. No, no, I'm not a, 
the theoretically, there are some other arguments, right? But they are able to establish or build a entanglement based repeater and a, and a routers. So those are the key, which I think, okay, let, you see the software approach right now looks fine, looks fine, it's fine. But the hardware approach is basically guaranteed you cannot break. All right, great. Thank you for that answer. Uh, the right. next uh, question. I'm sorry, I want to touch on oh. one more word. Sorry. You know, we talk about the defense in depth in cybersecurity, right? So it's not, not a bad other, another layer, which is not only not a bad, it's just better, actually. Okay, the, uh, the next question comes from Marika Ososinski. Would quantum channel require direct fiber optic connection? Would uh, quantum channel be viable for long distance communications with the current infrastructure? Uh, and goes on to say, I'm a bit worried about synchronization. Okay. Uh, so right now, I mean, I tell you this, uh, Korea and uh, many countries in Europe they are doing, uh, they are building, right, quantum network. Yes, they, they can, they can uh, transmit using the existing uh, fiber network, uh, of, of course. Otherwise, of course not, ideally would be build a one, you know, not, cannot that be done away, right? They are using the existing quantum network to, to transmit the data. The distance wise, you know, there could be several kilometers Miles, I mean, from here to DC, for my mine, right? There may be a better ones can be longer. I know then, you know, the thing technology changes can be longer. So I think uh, there is a concern earlier. I think now maybe better from NSA. You know, you need the trusted nodes because when we when we put a, you know, for example, a, a device quantum device here and the other party over there. The nodes would be needed to be trusted, but I think uh, that's fine for now. I think that's fine. Not, not a big concern. Why? Because you are not a, have a quantum communi communication with Russia, with North Korea, right? Do you? Do we know? Every data center is trusted. So again, te technically, there are arguments over there, but I would see pretty good. Very, very good. A couple more questions have come in. So uh, the next one says, uh, when would you expect to see A, crypto relevant quantum computers and B, personal computers capable of quantum computing? Okay. <laughs> so interesting, right? Um, I mean, for your know, general sense, you know, many scientists could believe like a quantum computer to do Big job right now is a bit small, right? The demo. You think about a, a, a thousand qubits, still small. Uh, maybe uh, next ten years, uh, you know, it could be longer, could be shorter. We hope everything. We hope, right? Could be shorter. So that that would be people uh, uh, are thinking about when we really want to use it. In terms of the uh, current computer doing quantum work, yes, I, I'm doing the I'm doing quantum work using my quantum computer. Current computer, of course, I can attach a fire on the on the IBM, right? You know, I have the account over there. So if you're doing this way, then usually we call simulation, right? There are simulators. There you can run everything, like a kiss kit, run everything on your computer, doing a lot of work, doing a lot already, right? Already, of course, you can use the HPC doing the, all the work. So I think it's possible, but uh, you know, simulator is simulator. The quantum computer is not that simple. Be like a analog computer. We have errors. So when we run right now, we run a, on the quantum computer, any program, I never run one time, not only me, everybody, right? I run maybe 100 times, even maybe more. Take an average. They might be 90% right, 10% was wrong, the wrong answer. Fine, fine with me. So that's the, we have a little bit like a statistics to show this is the right. So this is the nature right now as a, for the quantum computer, because what? You look at the 
semiconductor based, very low temperature, there are some laser based, you know, the interference, all over there. So there are errors. So that's that's the, the thing. But uh, but if you do a simulator, of course there are maybe error models over there, right? So not not real. So again, you know, if you get a big discovery on a classical computer over there, you still hard for you to claim that gonna be happening on the real computer. Okay, uh, we are pretty much at time, but I will uh, ask this one last question since it's the last one that's come in so far. Uh, the person explains that they uh, that these kind of math equations are not their forte, but with equations utilizing the exponential e as the base, how can huh. quantum security and cryptography address the AI security issues since AI's probability question is also using E to express probabilities, especially when the AI is trained to be malicious. Okay, yeah, that, that might be another talk. <laughs> uh, it's big, right? But I, I will try to answer uh, the, I do have, my team do have the area of doing the uh, quantum AI, uh, quantum machine learning. I actually, I'm working on another grant on the uh, DOD and the National Science Foundation. Uh, on this area. So, okay, Bec when I mentioned earlier about the quantum computing, right? Quantum computing is not, a, definitely not a now, not a now. So if you really want to solve something with the help of quantum computer, you, you just cannot, because I think in NVIDIA, you got a lot of uh, GPUs over there to train. So we, we don't have that uh, rich resources to, to actually do the work. But that doesn't mean as a scientist, as a researcher, we shouldn't start. Yeah, we do start over there. Actually, I have a several graduate students get IBM uh, award doing the quantum AI stuff. Well, security, yes, I think they're, they're related. I mentioned earlier, the Shor algorithm is not just for attack RSA. You can do anything if you computational wise, if it's exponential, you want you want to speed up, that could work. Of course, you know there are some other how you preset the the initial states and things like that. But that's the basic idea is any exponential you want to speed up, sure could work. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Wang. With that. Uh... Well, we did answer all the questions. We're a couple minutes over time, so I thank everybody for hanging in there. Uh, this webinar will be is has been recorded, so if you missed part of it, or if you have a colleague that wants to see it, uh, it will be up on our YouTube page probably by by the end of this week on the CSIX YouTube page. Uh, but with that, Dr. Wang, I would like to extend a hearty thank you for this wonderful presentation today. Oh, thank you very much. I'm a, my pleasure. Right. Have a great one.